Hey everybody, it is Mrs. Skmarchuk here again for another fun art lesson. Today I thought we would do a painting project. Now if you don't have paints, I actually do have an alternative. So feel free to go ahead and skip right along and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, but just so you can see what we're doing here today, we're going to make a butterfly and we're doing this through a printing process. This printing process is called a monoprint. Mono means one, so that means that we can make a print of this exactly one time. Normally when you can make prints, you can do it over and over again like a stamp. This one is just a one-time deal. So a butterfly is symmetrical, meaning it is the exact same on both sides. So that is a mathematical term. So we want to make sure that everything is going to be exactly the same on both sides. So here's how we do it. I'm going to take a piece of copy paper. You can use, if you have anything bigger, if you have anything a little stronger, definitely use that instead. But again, I like showing you how easy it is to do this with stuff you already have at home. So you want to try to match this up corner to corner as best you can. You want to fold it in half and press and then open it back up. If you are doing this with a pencil and you're not doing this with paint, still do this step. Um, you want to try to get a lot of water. I'm just using watercolor, but you want to get a lot of water in your black. And I'm just going to be making, I'll show you my example again, the outside lines, all of my outlines with my black watercolor. If you have acrylic paint or something in a tube, you can pour that out and I recommend putting just a little bit of water in it to water it down a little bit, but I want to use my watercolor directly from the pan. I'm just putting lots of water in it so it flows pretty easily. And as I use my brush, here's a little tip. When I swirl in my paint, I also want to wipe it on the lip. Just like I say with you guys, if you're in my classroom, wipe it on the lip but not those lips, you know what I mean. Alrighty, so I'm going to go ahead and make anything that's black on here. That is what I'm painting with my paints. If you are going to do this with a pencil because you don't have paints at home, then go ahead and just skip right along and you can see how this process will be just a little different for you. All right, so my butterfly, I'm going to start with the head. So the trick with this is I'm only painting on half of this and every time I paint, I want to fold my paper in half and press it down. So here's my head. It's just almost half of a circle. It's not very big. It's probably the size of my fingertip. And then I press and I open it back up. Perfect. So that is my head slash kind of eyes bulging out like a bug like how butterflies do. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and continue on with my body, starting right underneath my head. I'm gonna make a very slightly curved line. It stayed pretty close to the center of my paper that folds. Now, as I paint, I don't wanna paint too thick. You can already see it's bulging out a little bit. That's okay, that's okay. I just wanna make sure that I don't get too much paint on there, especially when I get my lines. So I'm gonna make sure that I am a little bit more neat with my paint from here on out. All right, so I'm gonna keep on going here. I am going to make the wings next. I'm going to start with the top and bottom part of my wings. So here I go around this top part going up towards this top corner. Don't forget to keep folding. It does dry quickly, so if I don't keep on pressing, then it's just going to dry and I'm not gonna see that print to the other side. Remember, we wanna make this symmetrical. We wanna make this the exact same on both sides. That's the whole point of this one. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing down below. This time I'm going to my bottom corner. And there we go. 
All right, so again, this is called a monoprint. I'm printing this one time. If I were to keep on pressing, eventually it would dry out and I cannot make more than one print. So that is why this process is called a monoprint. So I can keep on adding to it and that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna start with my middle of the wings here, what splits it in half. I'm just gonna make a line that goes about halfway across. It's not quite as long. Perfect. All right, now for this next part, you can decide how the edge of your wings will be. If you wanna make them just a little curve line, that's fine. On my example, I did a wavy line. So just so you can see how something else is a little different. Um, I'm gonna try something, I'm gonna try two different ways just to show you some diversity here, what you could do. So the bottom one, I'm just going to make a curve line, okay? That's kind of the standard one. If you want to keep it kind of just like a normal butterfly, that's probably what you want to do. All right, my next one, I'm going to try something a little different. It's going to be more of a curved wavy line. It looks like this. I'll start at the bottom, actually. So just something a little different. I like to switch it up when I can. Okay, press really well, here we go. Now, if you start to, or maybe you've had this, if you start to see some parts where it did not print fully, no worries, you can either do this now or you could do this later, but you can just paint right back inside that so you can see it again. Now the trick with that is you can't make any new lines. These are lines that you would have already had. Otherwise, it's not gonna be symmetrical. So I'm just filling those in. And again, you can do this now or you can wait and do that at the very end and see all the ones that you need to make. All right, so now it is time to design our butterfly and you can do this any way you like. So. You just want to break up the spaces here using your lines and shapes. Now, I don't recommend doing anything too teeny tiny or so many lines that are crazy close together because it'll be really hard for you to fill in those spaces later. If you have paints and you're filling this in with paint, the paint will only go so far. You want to make sure that they don't blend into each other and they're not super close next to each other because it'll just be kind of a mess at the end. If you're using colored pencil or markers or crayons, now it's a lot easier to fill in those tiny spaces, but it might take a long time. So just giving you that heads up, a little of a warning, make sure you're not doing anything too close together or too teeny tiny. All right, here we go. This is how I like breaking it up. I like starting with lines that kind of repeat the shape of the outside edge. So I'm going to do a line that repeats the outside edge of that bottom wing. And then I'm going to go ahead and break that up even more. Now, if you go quickly, you can do a couple lines at a time because you're doing so many lines now. So that's what I'm doing. This is kind of a big space. so. I'm going to break that up. How do I want to do this? I'm going to do something a little different. Here we go. Some more wavy lines. I did add a little bit of a circle there. There we go. Okay. Now something else that's really cool with patterns and makes it look really, really neat is if you repeat things that you just did, we call that echoing. So I have a circle here. It would definitely be a nice touch if I added some circles up above and echoed my bottom wing. It makes everything flow nicely together. All right, next I have that wavy line. I do have a wavy line in the edge here, so I'm not so concerned about that, but let's add one more in. Oh, that'll look cool. Yeah. Okay, so I could be done if I wanted to be, or I could add a little more. I like adding just a tiny bit more details. 
So something else to keep in mind, it's really nice if you have some spaces that are small, but not too small because we talked about that. Some spaces that are medium size and some spaces that are a little bit bigger. Having all of those different shapes on there and sizes adds a nice variety to your butterfly. All right, I do see some spots that I have to touch up. And one more thing that we need are our little antennas. So I like doing just a little curve line. If you wanna do that more of a spiral or a straight line or a straight line with a little dot at the end, it's just a couple ways you can do it. Okay, we have the butterfly created. I am going to take a very quick break from our paints just to show my other friends what they need to do if you are doing pencil and not paint. So if you're looking to just fill this in with paint, feel free to skip right along. Or if you're curious and you wanna see how you can do this with pencil, here we go. So same way that I started before, fold it in half. All right, pencil friends, if you are just tuning in now, here's the dealio. You are only drawing half of your butterfly. So I am going step-by-step step drawing my butterfly with you. Feel free to pause and catch up. I'm going to go a little bit quicker because I'm just showing you what half of that butterfly looks like. And then I'll show you how you're going to make it appear on the other side. One thing you want to keep in mind, I'm using just a regular number two pencil press kind of hard, okay? You wanna make sure that it leaves a really nice, fine, dark line on your paper here. And keep in mind, I'm only doing half of my butterfly, so if some parts look a little strange, that's just because I'm making half of it. So when I get to designing my wings too, keep in mind that you can design your wings any way you like. You can add a bunch of different lines. You could add in a bunch of, bunch of different shapes. It truly doesn't matter, so don't feel like you have to copy the way I do my wings. Okay, so here we go. Start with half of my head. It's going to be about the size of my finger, something to keep in mind. A slightly curved line for my body. It goes down pretty far. I left just a little bit of room at the bottom here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make the top of my wing. It goes towards this top corner. And the bottom of my wing towards the bottom corner. All right, then you're gonna split those wings in half, making a line that goes about halfway across. And now you can connect those wings any way you like. If you wanna just stick with a curved line, you could do that. Or like I did in my example, I did a little bit of a wavy line. Just a few options there for you. Okay, now I'm gonna design my wings. Something I like to do is repeat some lines that I have on my edge here. You can put in some shapes. You can put in some more of those different kinds of lines, or you can split up that space. So that's just a couple things that I did. Um, maybe I want to repeat some of those ideas down at the bottom. We call that echoing when we repeat things from one part of our paper onto another part. It makes our artwork look pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and do something very similar I did with the top wing because I really like that. Okay, so I just need my antenna now. And here we go. Now I'm going to print this on the other side. So I'm going to fold this over. And make sure you have enough of a tip to do this, okay? You're going to press kind of hard over the entire part that you drew, which is pretty much the whole paper. You are going to color right on top. What this is doing is transferring all of your lines to the other side of your paper. So you should be able to see it really well on the other side. You might have to go over those lines when you're done, but at least you know that it's exactly the same and it all matched up really well. 
and your butterfly is going to be symmetrical. All right, let's see if I got it. Perfect. It's kind of hard to tell on the screen, but I can see where my butterfly printed. So all I'm going to do is go back over all of those lines so you can see it one more time. So if you're doing this step, that's what you're working on. My friends that are painting, I'm gonna come back to you. If you are uh, using marker or colored pencil or crayon to color this in, as soon as you are done um, going over all of these lines with your pencil, then I would recommend, if you have a Sharpie or a black marker, I would recommend going over all those pencil lines with a black marker just so you can see them really well. It always makes your artwork stand out really nicely if you're able to outline. Um, and then we'll talk about what kinds of colors that you can use in just a little bit. Okay, here we go for my painting friends. Um, we are going to choose either warm colors or cool colors. So here's my color wheel. The color wheel tells us that one half of the color wheel is my blues, gr greens, and purples. And that those are my cool colors. So think of like the colors of the um, ocean or colors that you would see come out on a cold and rainy day. They make you feel kind of chilly. The other side are my yellows, oranges, and reds. This is a red violet. It printed horribly, so that's why it looks brown on here. I promise you that's not what it is. So if you wanted to do warm colors, that's your option there. Now, I went with warm colors on my example here. I am going to switch it just so you can see something else on my example I'm working on. I am going to be doing some cool colors um, on my butterfly. The background, you want to just flip flop. Whatever you did for your butterfly, you want to do the opposite for your background. So if you are doing warm colors for your background, think of it more of like a sunset or um time when the sun might be coming up in the morning or it's going down at night so just so you can see that transition happening you can see it does make sense okay so if you're painting I do have a couple of techniques that you could do so I really like this blue I'm gonna go ahead and grab some blue now something you can do to make your colors a little less bright you can actually use your lid so if you put some water here on the lid and then dip into your paint here. It will make your paints just a little less bright if that's what you would like to do. Or of course, if you want them really dark, then go ahead and just use it straight from the pan. Um, if you want to blend your colors, I'm gonna rinse my brush real quick. If you wanna blend your colors, I'm gonna go ahead and pick green. Remember, I'm doing cool colors. Cool colors are green, blue, and purple, and anything that falls right next to it. Now, as I do this, you might've noticed, I'm immediately going to the other side and painting what I see over here that's exactly the same. That's important to make sure everything stays symmetrical. All right, I love this blue green right here. So I'm gonna paint on the other side and notice how I go right in between and I make it flow from one color to the next. It looks awesome that way. So that's how you can blend your colors together. I'm being careful not to go on my black line too much. It is still a little wet, but I wanna make sure that it doesn't run and bleed into my colors because that won't look too good. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep on painting here and you can keep on uh, filling in all those spaces by blending or just by filling it in with one solid color. And don't forget, whatever you do on one side, go immediately to the other half and make sure it's the exact same. All right, so before I get too hooked on this, I know it's very addicting. I can't really seem to stop. Okay, but before I get too hooked on this, um, for the background, 
again, you want to flip whatever you're doing. So I did cool colors for my butterfly. That means I'm going to do warm colors for my background. And keep in mind that those warm colors are red, orange, and yellow. Also by doing this, it's going to make your butterfly really stand out. So one way that I like making my background is I like starting with one color at a time and filling in just about all those spaces. And then I can start to blend in those colors here and there. If you want to make this more of a true sunset, something that you would actually see in the sky, what you could do is do more rows of colors and just make them blend in between. So for instance, if I started with yellow at the bottom, then I went to orange and then I went to red and I would just make sure that those colors blended in between. Then it would look a little more like a true sunset. All right, so you can see I switched colors on here. I like just adding in these colors as I go. I really like seeing those in between colors that I start to mix. I think that's really pretty. All right, you guys, that is pretty much it for our butterfly. Before you get caught up in watching me paint, I told you, can't really stop, so I'm gonna make myself stop. I'm gonna end on my finished example up here so you can see, and I hope you guys have a lot of fun making your butterflies, and please, please, please don't forget to send me any butterflies you make. Send me photos, you can leave a comment here on YouTube, you can email me. You can um, tag me on my Instagram. Again, my Instagram is Kamarchuk Studio. You'll see a bunch of other classroom ideas um, that I do on my Instagram, as well as my own personal art. So if you're interested in seeing that, then you can check out my YouTube or my Instagram. All right. So happy creating, everybody. I hope you have a fantastic day and I will see you back here soon. Bye, guys.